What is up, everyone? Thanks for joining us for episode 105 of the GameCast. Um, I am one of your hosts, Kenny, and with me is Tess. And we are back. <laughs> uh, for those who are listening just through sound, Tess put up the peace sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so we have a dope show for you today. Um, before we get into that, though, I do want to make mention of some of the things that I've seen or done since we've, you know, recorded last. Mm -hmm. um, I got to see The Blackening. With uh, I got to see an early screening of The Blackening and I uh, brought my friend Dre, who's been on the, the podcast. He was on yes, here. Yes, yes. Um, and I, I need to go get him back so we can talk about that film. But it's funny. It's a funny film. And I think that it's one of the better, like, comedy is hard to do, I think. Mm. And, and a lot of comedies that have released recently, like I, I talked about uh, Cocaine Bear and how that was, like, not what I thought it was Kinda going wild. to be. Um, and so this is another horror comedy film or whatever. And this is funny. It's, but it's mainly funny for black folks. White people mm -hmm. can, can get it too, but it's mainly funny for black people. I will say this though. I actually agree with, it, it actually got rave reviews mostly. There are some mm -hmm. reviews that are on the negative side. And I actually agree with some of the sentiment. Uh, mm -hmm. Because going into it, you're thinking more of Get Out in terms mm -hmm. of layering of you know, ideas and all those other things, dealing with black people in horror and what that means on several levels. Um, you know, whether it be the the tropes that are negative, like, you know, the black person dies first. Well, you have a whole black cast, so. Yeah, everybody's black, so. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, things like that. And it's, it's a little on the shallow side. It doesn't go the way of Get Out. There's no profoundness in mm -hmm. its messaging. And I understand how that could be a letdown for, for a lot of folks. At the mm. same time, I laughed a lot. I think it's <laughs> one of those, one of those things where like it's just you kind of understand it. it. It there is a bit of a letdown in the sense that it is a little shallow because mm -hmm. there's some really key messages in it that are kind of like washed over. Mm. Like when you when you watch it, when you guys eventually check out the film, um, I'm not going to spoil anything. But when you get to the villain, the villain's reasoning for doing the things that they do. It's actually really profound what he's doing, and but it's, it's shown in a, a very shallow way. So if you're just looking at it, like just, you know, what's being presented, you, you'll be like, man, this isn't really, that's it. That's all he was upset about, you know, or she was upset about. But then when you, when you figure out what's happening under the layering, um, the commentary and everything, it's like, oh, that's actually pretty deep. Yeah. Unfortunately, it stops there. And that's where mm. the criticism comes in from the reviews. And and I'm like, I get it. I totally get it. I'm not even mad at y'all. Not, not mad at y'all at all. But I think it's fun. Definitely a fun film. Um, mm -hmm. Go with a group of black folks. And I think you'll have a very good time. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I don't think, I don't know. I hope this comes to the DVD or, you know, when they release it or whatever. But the version that I saw, because it was an early screening, it had extra bits at the end after the mm -hmm. credits. And so there's this whole game show where they talk about like, you know, who's the blackest essentially. And yeah. they ask questions that a lot of black people know. And mm -hmm. tell me why I got like all of them right. But one, <laughs> <laughs> me, and my, me and my man Dre was like, why do black people have the same experiences all over the I planet? Know. Like it's I crazy. Know. I know it's crazy. Like one of them was like, um, it was like uh, basically something about like, what do black people keep underneath their uh, sink, like in the kitchen or whatever. And I was like, like plastic bags. And they're like, yeah, yeah well, plastic yeah. bags. Plastic bags. Yeah. Yes, that's true. <laughs> it's like, plastic bags. My man Dre was like, I have plastic bags right now. <laughs> yeah. He's like, we're the most recycling people ever. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, yeah, definitely plastic bags. <laughs> it makes sense, right? And so, um, so yeah, just stuff like that. It was really dope. Mm -hmm. I, I think people should check it out, especially if you're a horror fan. Um, it's not scary at all. I'm just letting right. you know. It's just not. It's like but scary movie. It's it's comical. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so I, I checked out that. I also saw Transformers, and that okay, was cool. great. Cool, yeah. Good. And it was like a big Saturday morning cartoon. Um, awesome. And really the bar was low. They just had to be better than Michael, you know, the Michael Bay films. Michael Bay, but yeah. Bumblebee was good, and and this is really good too. Um, it also had a black director, so yeah. the cast is mainly you know people of color and everything. You can kind of tell by 
how things were shot. It's incorporated with 90s hip hop. It's a lot of cool stuff is happening in this film. And mm -hmm. I enjoyed it a lot. I think it does follow the formulaic aspects of other Transformer films where there's this MacGuffin <laughs> that they have to find and they're running around the planet trying to get it before the bad guys do, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But yeah. the stuff that happens in the, in, in, in the in-between time is actually pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's corny, but entertaining. It's Transformers. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So um, if you haven't seen that, definitely check that out. If you're a fan, mm -hmm. I'm a big Transformer fan. Yeah, and so I'm going to see everything Transformer related. That's just yeah. it's what it is. It's what it is. Um, were you able to check out anything this week or this past week? Um, I saw some Black Mirror. Nice. Nice. Black Mirror is back, y'all. And all I have to do is say the exact same things that I said before, man. This show's trippy. <laughs> I'm, I'm not done with the season at all. Like I, I was tired and I think that I, you know, I watched the first four episodes and four, I, I don't know if I got to five. Um, you know, the thing with Black Mirror, especially after you watch five seasons of that show, yeah, you start to recognize twists. And if you're an ADHD or like me, you typically get twists before they happen because you're, you know, overactive brain is doing the work which is why this show is actually pretty decent because they know that you're gonna find they know you're gonna see the twists so they yeah. twist again and twist again and so it's always a little bit harder to 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 get it and i mean and i like that i like being surprised yeah. um i what i don't like is when some you know you have a twist that goes that like twists too many times where it's just like wait what were you trying to teach us then <laughs> Like, this is just yeah. bad. Yeah, um, they, they twist themselves around. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it, it's good. Like, the first few episodes that I saw, and um, I've seen some comments that some people have made. But again, I didn't. I haven't seen the whole season, so I can't, like, comment on everything. But, you know, originally with Black Mirror, it was always supposed to be, like, at one one hour to one and a half hour episode like some there's only a couple episodes that i think that were longer than like an hour or hour 10 yeah i think there was a couple that maybe were an hour and a half or they were you know a two-parter and some of those are like really amazing but their intention was always to be movies like that they're short they're movies that's kind of what right. they are because a lot of them didn't um connect with each other especially in the beginning they didn't connect to each other and then later on it started becoming more of a universe where some episodes actually connect and then the director actually used repeat actors because at first he didn't do that. Now yeah. there's callbacks to everything. Like the music that plays in one episode is the song that was sung in an episode in season two or something like that. And then, okay. then you see like um, the, the Netflix episode. So there's a Netflix episode. Basically it's there. I think it's well played. Um, there <laughs> is, <laughs> there's um, there is a, just a direct call to a character in a whole nether you know in in the movie the actual black mirror movie and it's like this is awesome i just i appreciate those little drops the little yeah. you know um but yeah it was really good a lot of people are talking about the netflix episode um joan is i think it's joan is terrible or something or whatever yeah joan yeah, is yeah, awful saw joan is awful and that was fun <laughs> you know i thought that was fun um, you know, I, I saw some people say some things they were like, oh, you know, it's like Selma Hayek drop is stupid. And I was like, Selma <laughs> Hayek has reached mother status. Okay. So when somebody is mother, no, they're yeah. mother status. Okay. Tilda Swinton, mother status. Judy Dench, mother status. Angela Bassett, mother status. Shut up. Don't talk right. nothing about Selma Hayek. <laughs> okay. Mother and auntie. You know, hello. <laughs> hello. You're like, hey, auntie. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, I, I watched several episodes and I'm, I'm not I'm not disappointed. I, I did see the, um, think that the, it's not called the Sea of Tranquility. Obviously, that's a crater in the moon. Um, I believe it's a crater in the moon, but. I believe so, yeah. I forgot what it, this episode was called, but. You know, the space episode and I, I thought it was really good I did think it was kind of like I it at the end I was sitting there like but what's gonna happen <laughs> you know it's one of those things <laughs> where something happens and it's like But 
but won't the police <laughs> come? Like, you know what I mean? You, you can twist something around so much. He's like, oh, okay, well, this is the twist and this is the twist and this is what this person wanted the other person to feel. But aren't the police going to come? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, there has to be some type of consequence to, to what's there happening. There has to be consequences. I mean, so anyway, so yeah, so there was that. But I, I thoroughly, I mean, I'm obviously I'm enjoying the new season. I'm just so glad that we finally did pick back up because I think the original, the original reason why um, the creator didn't want to continue was because like when the pandemic happened and like. Black Mirror things seem to be more of a reality. <laughs> it's right, like, yeah. It's like, this is depressing and I don't think I want to do this anymore. <laughs> and then, and you know what? It only took a couple of years and now we're all back to our like sadistic masochist selves. And, you know, we <laughs> want this again. Well, because I mean, you know. You think about it like um, they already, they revealed, Netflix recently revealed the cast that's coming to uh, Squid Games too. So it makes sense. Interesting thing though, is that we all are coming, I guess, humanity is coming back to this point where mm-hmm. we never really left. I think yeah. for us, because we spoke about it on previous podcasts where the apocalyptic stuff actually was comforting because it's like, oh, it's not that bad. Like like, like we saw, um, was it Tokyo sinking or? Uh, oh, yeah. Crap, mm-hmm. was Japan sinks. That, that anime. Yeah, Japan sinks. And how, how like doom in the vibe of like just create doom that that anime gave off and it was yeah. like no this is refreshing and it's like it sounds weird because a lot of bad stuff is happening to these characters but at the mm-hmm. same time it's like we're in a pandemic but it's not like that yeah and so you could kind of it's a weird thing we explained it, it better previous episodes go check that one out but yeah yeah which, which whatever so like, one it is <laughs> right it's so like black mirror to me it's like yeah this is this is kind of an escape anyways because we're not living in that sort of environment we're not so for me i would have been like yeah we could do black mirror like if i was the director but i guess that would be different when you actually have to write it and put yeah. it together and stuff like that you have to kind yeah. of live in that space yeah so i can i could kind of see that being yeah being negative um <laughs> yes yeah, that's that's wild um, it is speaking wild. of netflix though mm-hmm. and them announcing things they finally announced the project that the game of thrones uh writers have been working on mm-hmm. and and the writer's not the book, but the actual show that went off the rails on the last season. That being uh, uh, D.B. West and David Benoff. I think that's how you say his last yeah, name. Benioff. Yeah, Benioff. Yeah, Benioff. David um, Buster. And that's, <laughs> right, Dave and Buster. Um, <laughs> and that's Three Body Program. And what's, what's dope about this... Three Body Problem. Oh, sorry. Three Body Problem. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Um, and what's dope about this is the fact that it is a it's it's a book a trilogy that's already been mm-hmm. written and is done. So one of the things that or one of the biggest criticisms outside of all the other random things that happened on the show was the mm-hmm. fact that once they were at the end of the books, they didn't know what to do. Yeah. With Game of Thrones, and you can you can tell the quality yeah. of the seasons went down like it just skydived mm-hmm. after a certain season, and it's because they ran out of material and so. They yeah. kind of had to make it up as they go, and that didn't it didn't do so well. And like they are, to their credit, they are creative. Yeah, they are. They were able to, you know, but it's but it's at the same time it's like you have to work with what you can work with, and because they're working with an already established world that was built up so well, mm-hmm. it's it's rough to kind of finish that on your own. Totally mm-hmm. understand that, and so either I, I, what I was looking forward to seeing from them potentially is either a brand new thing that they just come up with themselves. So they, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're not following anybody else or something that's finished. Mm-hmm. So you can't, I mean, you can screw it up. We've seen that. But yeah. You have something to go by. And when they have something to go by, I think they do really, really well. Yeah. And so with the three body Agreed. program, I think that they're going to do well. They're also, um, are being partnered up with true blood writer and the terror, uh, Infinity showrunner uh, Alexander Wu, and I believe it's going to be produced by. Essentially, there's a lot of people who have worked on some really good television yeah. that are going to be helping them as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that executive producer, one of the executive producers, is Ryan Johnson from Knives Out, mm-hmm. and uh, Brad Pitt. So there's a lot of people that are attached to this. That potentially this is going to be a dope, dope show coming mm-hmm. to Netflix. Um, it should be. It should be. 
That's mm -hmm. yeah, key. <laughs> it should be a really good show. Um, it's supposed to hit January uh, 2024, and yeah, it is. It looks pretty cool. They drop yeah. a teaser for it to kind of show, mm -hmm. you know, what's happening and whatnot. And at first, I wasn't really, I didn't understand what was going on mm -hmm. because it wasn't. Um, it was vague, like in terms of what. Yeah. Was, and granted, it's a teaser. It's and they to be should vague, make but, it. They want. They should keep it vague. Actually. I think they should. Yeah. That is my opinion. Keep it as vague as possible because the it's a mind bending book anyway. And yeah. um, keep it as vague as possible so that people are just like, wait, what? Oh, this looks cool. Okay, yeah, sure. And that's yeah. Fine. Don't let people Apparently, don't, you know, um, don't drop everything. Don't drop everything in your teaser. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You wanna you wanna, you know, keep something to your chest. Um, but apparently uh, some things happen in nineteen sixties China that affects things in the future uh through space and time mm -hmm. and so there's some things that are happening with you know the laws of nature and you know things unraveling and whatnot uh, they're supposed to be aliens i'm not sure if they're aliens i haven't read the books myself mm -hmm. but there's Maybe supposed either. to be all this mystery and whatnot and you know it, it has a whole lost vibe to it mm. well, at least from but what i saw hopefully but like, do this justice than lost. because yeah because right. lost is trash <laughs> yeah, right? Still to right. this day. Final season of Lost. Yeah. Yep. What are y'all doing? What is with the final seasons? Just tripping at the... F I mean, I guess it's tough to tie in and wrap up a show in a good yeah. manner. But especially if you weren't... Oh, go ahead. But, no, uh, one of the things is... Um, and I guess this is me getting older and getting a little bit wiser and kind of understanding more things. But I... I you know, we're the consumer at the end. We're the end user, you know, we're, we're right. So we're going to see something like, like, this was enjoyable. This wasn't enjoyable. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, when it comes to like show writing and how like nobody comes in and says, this is how it is A to Z. Right. Even though I right. think with Lost, they did say, OK, it was only going to it was always only going to be this many seasons and it was always going to be da, 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 da. And this is what's supposed to happen at the beginning. This was supposed to happen at the end. But even with that being said, they did a really bad job of the wrap up. Cause if yeah. no matter what, at the end of loss, if it was supposed to be that they went through this whole thing and then to have this um, creationism ending, which again, mm -hmm. it's, that's not really the, that's not the problem. The problem is that it came out of nowhere. And the problem and is you said it, came, it wasn't going to be that. Yeah. You know, so, like you, you kind of was like, this is not going to be what you think it is. And it's like, Oh, it is what we think it is. Right. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. was just like, it, it It was just poorly done because what you, I mean, I don't even want to talk about oh, turning off half of your audience that isn't religious or anything like that, because you can do stuff that is religious, that still is storytelling so that even people who are not religious or, you know, people who are anti set, said religion will still like it because the story is good. Like right. this is right. bad storytelling. And so I, I feel like, um, there are times when something is so good, it's just so good that it doesn't, it is you yourself, you, you um, surprised yourself in what you yeah. wrote, you know, what you created. We have good examples of that. Obviously lost being one, the promised Neverland is a great example of that. <laughs> I mean, that was probably just divine intervention because the creator is probably racist. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with that one. Yeah, it's and uh, you know things change. You know, as you as you start to work through things, you know yeah. you have input from other writers. Others. If you have a writer's room, mm -hmm. you know you have input from the actors, and like you know, I think my character would kind of go this way. Yeah, things change, and a lot of it, you know, to be honest, a lot of it changes for the better. Like when we see mm -hmm. shows end, and then they have the interviews with the director, and they're like, "We you know we actually meant for this ending." I'm like, "Oh God, that would have been right terrible." You know what right. I mean? Like, and so. But it's at the same time, it's like, man, like some of these really did end poorly, which was, yeah. you know, Game of Thrones. It did not. And, and, and mind you, Game of Thrones was so good. I was late on Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. I started watching after the season after the Red Wedding. Okay, I saw it all over Twitter yeah. mm -hmm. and people were like okay. blowing it up. And I was like, I didn't own HBO at the time. Mm -hmm. And 
I was like, what is this red wedding people yeah. are talking about? And I saw all the memes. And I just didn't understand. And I was like, mm-hmm. and a friend of mine was like, hey, look, just just watch this. Just watch this. Just watch it. I started it. watching and I binged like so much of it. Mm-hmm. And then I started buying HBO just to finish. You know, I caught up with everybody. Mm-hmm. And then for it to end the way it ended, I was like, there was just Straight so much. Yeah, it was. And not even like, you know, aside from the fact that you built up so much lore mm-hmm. and mystery and you know, this final showdown for years, literally yeah. years. Yeah. Even if that wasn't the case, even if it was like an a, a hour and some change film, mm-hmm. the ending would still be poor. Yeah. Because of how you've portrayed these characters and that what yeah. you let, you know, happen between them and the reason yeah. behind the, the, you know, why they did things that they did. It was just all very poorly planned. Yeah. It didn't make any sense. Um, and it was like, you can't, sorry, you can't just cover everything in ash and then act like that. And then, you know, use the popularity of Arya Stark to ride a horse through a whole bunch of ash and act like that's okay. Like, the, right. oh, this is, yeah. this is so um, traumatic. And so, no, you're, it, you're escaping with good effects at that point. That was exactly. it. <laughs> that was exactly. it. That was that's- like, no. I would have much and, rather had, and, and spoilers, the people who hmm. Game of Thrones, but mm-hmm. I would have much rather had them lose initially with the other army. Yeah. Like the, the, you know, winter was coming and it just destroyed mm-hmm. everything and they're getting their way. They're going all the way back to the other person's castle mm-hmm. um, and she won't let them in. And then right. the, the, the fire comes because like you won't let us in and we're mm-hmm. being chased by zombies or whatever the case. Mm-hmm. That would have been dope. Now yeah. we have a reason for her to burn because I don't care. My people are dying. Mm-hmm. We have a real conflict here that people can chew on because it's yeah. like on one end, the world is potentially ending and you yeah. won't help us stop it. Right. And on the flip side, we're also like dying out here. Yeah. You know, do I destroy half the wall to, to, to get us in or do I, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like there's some really cool things there. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, no, she gets upset and murders everyone. It's like, no, like, no. Yeah. It's, and people were so calling dumb. it. They were yeah. calling it online. It was like, please don't let her do this thing. Yeah, we all knew. We were like, we we're watching it and saying, so y'all really trying to have this Danny goes mad arc because, like, you guys are really, really, really pushing this. And it's like, yeah. you, you're, you didn't write it though. You didn't. If Danny, because I have no problem with Danny going mad like the half the other Targaryens, but right. you didn't write it. You never wrote it that uh, under no circumstances did anything that happens to Danny in season seven make her go mad. She was pissed. There's a difference between yeah. being insane and a difference with everybody who's supposed to be for you, working for you, trust you, trust them because you're only one person literally betraying you. I'm sorry if six of your people just straight up betrayed you because for whatever stupidity, I'm going to kill them yeah. too. If I have the yeah. ability to, you're dying. Sorry, yeah. guys. Yeah. <laughs> you're also it's, I'm it's, like, it, there's so many bad things that happen yeah, bad right in here. that. So I, I'm hoping yeah. that three body problem does not have this. Yeah. You know, does not suffer the same fate because apparently yeah. the books are really good. That's what I've been told. That's why they're in my my audio book. <laughs> right, right, forever. right. Like I've been wanting to read these books for over a year. I did. I've been yeah. I've been wanting to read these books since my concussion like mm. and I'm, i couldn't read i couldn't read well, so yeah, i was like because yeah. prior before then i was watching all my, you know like you know watching all my online little videos and that's when i stumbled upon quinn and quinn's yeah. like read this book and i'm like uh okay yeah yeah great and then i got a brain injury and couldn't read no more so, <laughs> so I am like, that's not I'm, funny but it's funny <laughs> it's i know right it's like oh what happened? you can't read no more like no moving my eyes from side to side actually gives me real nausea so yeah. so like yeah audiobooks it is speaking of audiobooks i've been listening to the children of hoodin read by christopher lee and i gotta say man i should have been listening to more books by christopher lee long time i mean like christopher lee the voice of i mean not the voice the actor who plays Saruman people, you should know this. Right. But man, that gravel, that that voice. Man, the right <laughs> voice man? can really bring out a story. Oh, like, not just delivery, but just the sound. Mm. It's like there's some type of authority there that just mm. works with a story. Yeah. It's like, I am, I am listening. I am, you have my attention, sir. Oh, you like, got my attention. Really? I'm like, this is like, great. I know <laughs> this now. I know this story. I'm going to make a side comment, though, on reading and and, um, 
uh, audiobooks before we get back to our topic. Yeah. Audiobooks is not the same. And I think that's why I've always said, I've always, I've literally always said, and just side note, you know, my therapist, my, my um, concussion therapist saying, uh, you know, you should do audio. Why, why don't you try audiobooks since you, since reading is difficult. And I was like, well, I've always had an issue because I'm ADD. Like I've always had this issue with like paying attention to things that I'm listening to. Yeah. And I am doing so well at paying attention to this book, probably because of his voice. And, you know, I just want to listen to it. But it is hard when when you have a book that talks about locations, you know, places on a map, and then yeah. uses words that are not in your own language. And so those things become, like, fleeting. <laughs> and, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they lead to a little bit of confusion, and then they lead to a bit of, like, memory loss, because you can't triangulate <laughs> it. You get what I'm saying? Though? Right, right, right. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, what did you just tell me, like, in your awesome voice three minutes ago? Because since it doesn't exist in my reality, I can't place it. And then, luck- luckily, I am so familiar with Tolkien's work that these things are familiar to me, but not every, like, you know, the, like, I can't remember on the map, the distances. Like, if you're talking to me about the, um, X rivers, in Valerian, I'm like, no, I can't remember all of those. I don't know where everything is. And so I'm getting a little confused. And I'm like, wait, this per- I don't know this person. I don't know this name. I don't remember this person. I read this book 15 years ago. Like that kind of stuff. So right. like that will never, ever replace having an actual book in hand. But um, it's a lot faster. <laughs> Facts. Facts. <laughs> and audiobooks are great. Like, They're so great. Definitely. Um, anyway, <laughs> I actually got. I need to grab. I need to grab these to to tell you the truth, um, because mm-hmm. I haven't had time. Yeah, I've been reading. I do have. I, I I do have time, and I don't. I have a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. and the little bit of time to read that I do have, I usually I'm in like my Marvel Unlimited app I, or whatever reading. I'm playing comics that. And one. <laughs> that, that that too <laughs> that too, um, because it's hard to like. And I bought a bunch of books. I bought some books recently. Yeah. And just like just getting a moment to sit down and just not have to do anything and yeah. just read would be dope. I really got to set aside some time. But, yeah. Um, hopefully, again, going back to what we were talking about, hopefully the show is good. I'm going to try to yeah. read the books uh, prior to the show dropping. I, I do have some time. At least yeah. read the first book. I don't think they're going to do. I think it's going to be split into seasons in the sense that they're not going to do the all three books in one. I hope not. In just one not. season. There's too much fun um, in there. They're, they're going to milk yeah. it. They, they want their money. Exactly. <laughs> they paid way too much for these guys. Yeah, like, yeah. Way too much. Um, yeah. Also, side note, if you're watching on YouTube, um, my camera's doing this funny, fuzzy thing, and I don't know why, and I'm, I was trying to fix it. And I just, it's annoying. It's annoying me, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if it's annoying you. <laughs> I need to get a new camera, apparently. But... <laughs> Yeah, I don't get it. It it it'll be it fine. It always we does it like thirty minutes. Like it always does it every every. I don't even know. It just it it always right. does it at some point. <laughs> it's it's just disrespectful. It is is what it is. Just very disrespectful That's of my time. Disrespectful, especially when it's like you know in post while we're talking before we start the show. It's like everything yeah. is great, and then it's like and record. <laughs> Just blows the hell up for whatever reason. We have to go um, back to the video stuff. gaming. We have to go back to putting the video game instead of our face. I think this means <laughs> that nobody wants to see our faces. <laughs> no, they have to. You have to see me. <laughs> um, speaking of stuff blowing up, we also want to talk about um, the Flash. Now, I'm not going to talk about some of the things that people want us to talk about, being you know the problematic actor and stuff like that. What we can talk about, though, is something that I think is very interesting. And that actually it actually ties into our later co- um, topic and is the cameos. I'm not going to spoil the film. Um, a lot of people haven't seen it yet. But it if you've seen the trailers, you know that the Flash, you know, he goes through the multiverse. You know, he runs so fast that he breaks, you know, the, the laws governing time and space and all the other stuff. And he goes through to um, visit like Batman's in different eras. So like. Michael Keaton's Batman is in the film, yeah. you know, so that that's not a spoiler. That's in the trailer. Like it's been shown a hundred million times. You're fine. Right. And, but there's other cameos that, that come up as well, but some of these cameos are from people that are, have passed away. Now we've seen something mm-hmm. like this with, um, like rogue one where they had, um, I forgot 
the actor's name, but his name they too. actually yeah. CGI'd him into yeah. the film so in this yeah. weird, uncanny yeah. valley type thing where it's like, he looks real, but not real kind of thing. Yeah. He looked like um, a video game character. Yeah, and it was it was amazing in the sense that you could have a character come back, but it's mm-hmm. also weird because the person passed away. Like, this isn't, yeah. like, this isn't, um, and I don't know who handles that. I don't know if it's their estate, you know, their family gave the okay, you know, like, yeah, cool. or if Disney owns the rights to their, to that particular mm-hmm. person, because that could be a thing, too. I think, That's Joan is awful. Know, yeah, you know, <laughs> where, like, um, and then, like, Luke coming back in, or, like, the younger version of Luke Skywalker mm-hmm. in uh, the Mandalorian show, how they're, you know, but this is, this at least that actor is alive right yeah and can These can people, consent right can consent to this sort of thing um whereas these they, they, these people aren't and so yeah. they're making cameos in this film and what's interesting about this outside of the fact that they're in the film to begin with is that the uh the producer or the, the people who are making the film actually took clips from youtube and used them to voice the characters or the i say characters like because they're it's hard to it's they're people, but they're not people. If if it makes sense, the cameos mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to make them sound as opposed to like an actor who sounds like this particular person. Mm-hmm. They're like, no, we're gonna use their actual voice, but pull from YouTube, mm-hmm. and that's just weird to me. Like, yeah, it's weird. And and on, on on one hand, I'm like, if the estate, if the if the family said it was okay, they're getting paid for it. Mm-hmm. I I would assume. Yeah. Then fine. I would. I think that but, that's how, how they have to do it. Okay. Because then, on the other hand, I'm like, they they passed. Like, just let them. Because can you imagine? You know, let's say you have, you know, a famous family member who's been in a bunch of films. They pass mm-hmm. away. Then years later, you just see them on screen, talking as if they're there. Yeah, like a CGI version of them that you know doesn't exist on. Um... Right. Like even if the even yeah. like if the person's wife was like yes I'll do it, does, mm-hmm. would their kids be okay with it? Like do do they does that not trigger something or yeah. like just make you feel odd seeing your family member on screen if they're not you know what I mean? Like that's a weird. This is way past Coachella. Like <laughs> this, this is way past. Yeah, it's not Tupac like the interactive. Coachella. Yeah, Coachella. Yeah, like the interactive Michael Jackson. You know, like those. Um, it's a little, and which people had the same comment actually there, but it is, it yeah, is a yeah. very interesting topic. I mean, obviously like if the family consents to it or, um, um, you know, again, some people, they do sign away their likeness to be used because, you know, they, and yeah. they did it a long time ago when they needed the money. I, again, that literally right. is what Jonah's awful is about. <laughs> people signed away their likeness. And so they were able to create um you know television using digital forms of people and they can make it so realistic that nobody would know that it's not them but also kind of in the same vein of what we're talking about you know I, how much i love archer we love archer archer's amazing right and jessica walter died prior to the show being finished and the funny thing about that is that originally i i, I thought I, I and not not i thought i read something that said that the show had been completed um, mm. prior to her dying. So I really believed that. And then you realize that she's literally missing halfway yeah. through the season. And then that episode shows up in the end where she all of a sudden comes back and then was fighting, you know, a Mallory comes back and is fighting. And then they used the audio from what, like season seven or whatever, where she's like, I guess the old girl still got it. And I was yeah. like, it made me sad. Yeah, It made me sad because I was like, well, first of all, A, you guys didn't finish the recording, but B, it it didn't feel right because it was, it was reused. It was recycled audio. It wasn't new lines. They didn't, they didn't synthesize her voice to make her say something new so that none of us ever caught on to the fact that stuff wasn't finished recording. And I mean, anybody can correct me if I'm wrong here, just... Hey, fucking Aisha Tyler, just tell me if I'm wrong. Like, I could be wrong. I don't know anything. I, I say this all the time and I don't know anything. But like hearing the, the exact same line that she said when she was, you know, in another season, in another episode, it, it was it was weird. Yeah. It was really weird. Yeah. So 
I don't know. I just feel like there's a weirdness to it. Sometimes it's, it's invitable. I, I almost feel like, you know, when it came to Star Wars, the actor had passed away like long ago or whatnot. And so yeah. it was so long ago and it was like, oh, wow, this is this is really cool. But like, I can't imagine them doing Black Panther and then CGI. Oh. Like, like, I can't yeah. like literally CGI and Chad in there. No. You're going to put Chad in there like that? And I would be like... Okay, wait, no, this is, that's, something's not right here. Yeah, it's, it's. Like I would feel away. When then, and then and, use, what if they used audio from like 45? Yeah. Or what it's like. Not, it's not. Well, it's, 42, it's, I'm sorry. 42, 45. You know, like, it's not, it's not, because you think about it, it's not even, even if the, the family it, we're not. We're not saying that you can't do what you want to do with your mm-hmm. art. With your art. Uh, but we can't say that we 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 feel uncomfortable yeah. by what you've done. Yeah, you know, I, and I think I would feel really uncomfortable mm-hmm. in in that regard. Yeah. It would be different if it was like, like I know with the Fast and Furious. Um. Yeah. They they that were happened. able to finish. I want to say they finished shooting with his brother. Like his brother yeah. was a stand in and they only shot like from the back and you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it was like what they were doing was trying to finish something they had already started. Mm-hmm. And that I kinda get a little bit more. Yeah. This wasn't this wasn't shot. Yeah. Like the flash wasn't shot like years ago. Yeah. And they didn't get to finish it. This was, you know, un- unless I'm I'm tripping, <laughs> but that that wasn't the case. Yeah. And so you, you don't even need these cameos. Hmm. I get that they make, you know, the potentially make the film cool because you get to see these characters in the same uh, area of yeah. one another as opposed to being split, you know, separate entities mm-hmm. of Batman and, and Superman and whoever. But at the same time, it's like it's not really needed. Like mm. if you could have the same a similar effect could have happened with um, like if you. So I saw Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. I'm not going to spoil it for folks. Don't. It's amazing. Yeah. Go see it. However, mm. there are some really dope cameos in that film. But mm-hmm. what they do is either they they pull scenes directly from a, a film. And that's what and they so should it's, do. And so it's almost like, um, it's almost like a, someone looking on a monitor and like yeah. witnessing a another dimension and then that dimension playing out for you. Mm-hmm. as and, you know, Or they have another actor that represents that place. So mm-hmm. let's say, let's say, you know, like, you know, Chadwick passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, so they had his sister cameo in a new film mm-hmm. and she represents his universe. So mm-hmm. you didn't have to use that particular actor. You can use someone else who, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so they still got the cameos that they wanted, but in a way that felt more tasteful. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's what kind of is bugging me yeah. here because you didn't have to have, um, I keep stopping because I don't want to say the, the name because then I'll spoil it, but you don't yeah. have to have this particular actor show up. You can have someone from that universe. You can have mm-hmm. even the styling of yeah. the world from that universe. Because we know the difference between, let's say, um, Michael Keaton's Batman and how that, you know, everything looked like a, it was a, a play. Like they were mm-hmm. in a, a Broadway performance of Batman versus the newer Batmans and how that looks. You know what I'm saying? You can kind of tell. right? Yeah. I think they could have done something like that as opposed to actually having the, these people here. Like. Um, and then the fact that you had to pull YouTube audio, you had to scrub the music away if there's any music. You know, I don't even know how that works. Like, did they own the audio? Like, that's a, it's such a thing. But it's it's so many public things, that, things, public things. You know what I'm saying? Because like, they're public. But like, why didn't? Oh, I I mean, I didn't see it, so I don't know. But maybe you can answer this. Like, you know how like in Forrest Gump they they put Forrest in the the march like the march on washington like they had him in there go like but like but aside the fact that it was like tasteful and comedic at the same time right like i feel like if the flash is running through different universes like they could just use film from then that's what i was thinking yeah like you could and that's what i was saying in terms of how they did it in um the spider-verse film where it was just like a, a scene was pulled. Like, oh, yeah. this is a, I know what film that came from. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. if he's running through older films, um, yeah. even having him look different, like his visual, his appearance, mm-hmm. 
you know, kind of stands out. Like, hey, you don't look like you came from the 70s. Like, you mm-hmm. look like you have more color to you. You know what I'm saying? Um, which is hilarious in and of itself. But, yeah, like, I don't know. There's other ways that it could have been done. It's not necessarily needed either, considering mm-hmm. there's no... There's no... Uh, from what I understood, and I could be wrong, but there's no story element that's 100% needed uh, or or altered because of these cameos. Mm. It's not. Like, your basic story of what happens to him and why he's doing the things that he does is enough. Mm. This is just for bonus points. Like, mm. shocking moment. This is going to make the theater erupt. You know, this is going to be great. Talking points. Um, apparently, it didn't save the film, based on a lot of the ru- reviews. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> It's a cool, it's a cool moment that people were, you know, because we've gotten to this point where the multiverse in all aspects, whether it be Spider-Man, the MCU's multiverse, DC's multiverse, Mm -hmm. um, several other, you know, there's supposed to be a a monster verse, all these other verses of of characters um, intermingling and everything. This is supposed to be another one. And so... With that being said, I think it was like a one up, like we're trying to one up each other. Like, mm. you know, we got such and such, you know, back from the grave. And it's like, you don't, Do damn, you, you win. You win, Do y'all. You? You, you, y'all. Y'all got it. <laughs> yeah, y'all got yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, all right, yeah, that's fine. Uh, you know, that's just the new, that's the future. It's, it's sad. It's sad uh, yeah. on multiple levels. Um, speaking of sad. Our last topic is the opening credit scene for Secret Invasion. Um, apparently, it's AI made. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Marvel, not not Marvel or Disney. Disney, yeah, yeah. I believe Disney. Um, they they hired Method Studios, which Method has done other uh, special effects and, and and effects for them before, but it was all done Ooh. by people. Mm-hmm. In this case, they use artificial intelligence. Uh, to set up the theme. Now, their thinking is that the AI, because it kind of, I don't want to say randomizes things, it pulls elements from other places Mm -hmm. and to make these images. And the idea is that you don't really know what you're looking at. And that's, you Mm -hmm. know, because it's it's about scrolls and scrolls can look like any person at any particular time, right? And so the idea is that it's, it's unsafe, it's mysterious and all this other stuff. The problem, well, there's several problems with this though. And and they've spoken about how, you know, no one's going to lose their jobs. Um, you know, this was, you know, AI is not going to take over and all this other stuff. And I just want to put yet there. There's there's a yet. So there's that that problem. But then there's also the idea that AI, for the most part, steals work. Mm-hmm. The stuff that it pulls from is not AI as in the Terminator, Skynet. It's not a thinking thing. It's an algorithm. It pulls things. It pulls Pulls information. Mm -hmm. It pulls data. And the way it's creating these images is by pulling data from other artists, from artwork that it's seen and and things Mm -hmm. that it, you know, Google's database of stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. And then it's used to create these scenes. Now, granted, someone went in and, you know, did some edits and whatnot, but it doesn't take the, take away from the fact that these are being pulled from other places. Mm -hmm. And even the, 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 you know, the, the higher ups there don't, they don't fully understand it. They don't even know exactly. They're just like, oh, well, hey. this seemed like a cool idea. Yeah. Um, they literally said and, it. They're like, oh, we don't know what this does. Exactly. There, there's like, this is a cool concept. And, you know, the, uh, what is it, the, the director um, and executive producer, uh, Ali, I think it's Ali, Ali, sorry, um, he was saying that he didn't know. Yeah. He's like, I don't know. I don't know how this works. Uh, yeah. But it seems like it's something that would be kind of cool and, you know, uh, something that could that could potentially be a a means to an end. Like this is a new tool that we can create some really interesting things with. And Method Studios is saying that, you know, don't worry about it. The artists were there. We worked with it. And this was done yeah. with a AI custom, a custom AI tool. But we know that AI has been a hot ticket for a while now with everything from people creating records with AI voices that sound like artists that passed away. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, Timbaland was doing that recently with, with Biggie. And it was, it was, it was not a good look, Tim. It was not a good look. Um, And, you know, we saw like with the, you know, uh, people were making their avatars out of uh, 
using the AI and whatnot, which actually led to some interesting um, class action lawsuits. Um, artists were suing places like DeviantArt and Stability AI because uh, with their, you know, they were saying that their text to image AI tools were infringing rights on thousands of creative people mm -hmm. and artists all over, yeah. all over the world. They were pulling. And mm -hmm. yeah, because they're pulling the data, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's not, it's, 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 it's concerning, especially, so there's all that with it taking data, stealing and whatnot, mm -hmm. but it's also concerning given what's happening right now with the strike, with the writer strike. So anything that AI can do seemingly cheaper than what a human can do, they, people mm -hmm. will go towards that. Mm -hmm. So whether it's writing art, as you, we can see here, you know, um, music, like if they could just do the AI bits and mm -hmm. kind of get someone to kind of look and make sure it's, you know, they, no one can prove that you've copied, you know, you copy someone yeah. else's work, then what's stopping them from using it? Yeah. And so that's why I said yet when they were like, no artist was let go and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yet. Yeah. Because that's what happens. These things get, it's moving very rapidly. This AI it stuff. Is. It's it very is. fast. And the fact that it's already in a show you know, a big show that's coming to Disney Plus, it's concerning. You know, there was already, you know, talks with people talking about how, you know, we could come up with scripts using AI and like how um, I have a prime example on my on my oh, Twitter yeah. page. Remember on my Twitter page when I was like, Yeah, I really want this half a condon. I said, write this for me. Well, I don't remember what I said, but I was like, I want half a condon, half Targaryen. And I was like, and I'm just feeling too lazy to write it myself. Yeah. And the next thing I know, somebody posted like, hey, this is what I did with Chat GPT and sends me an entire synopsis of what this movie is about. Mind you, it was terrible. Right. It had T'Challa right. running off with Daenerys. And I was like, mm. <laughs> Stop. Pause. Rewind. Hell no. Okay. That's not happening. Play. <laughs> um, yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, and it's, it's wild. It's wild. We, we, I've seen this with someone tried to animate they were like you know using the ai to animate and and mm -hmm. you know make this whole scenario or whatever and it looked terrible like it was, there was no life there was no heart there was yeah. you know, or someone i did see someone also trying to uh they they wanted to make a children's book and so they used the ai to edit or to to make the pictures the illustrations mm -hmm. and it looked bad and i was yeah. like you wonder what like they don't understand that people went to school for this there's a whole design mm -hmm. philosophy behind how you create art for children. Yeah. Even though all the books look different, there are certain things and cues that you have that you can, that are, uh, make these books more approachable to kids. Yeah. What mm -hmm. you have is not what you think you have, and it's not going to work the way you think yeah. um, it's going to work. And especially when you put it up next to a book that's illustrated by a person. Right. Um, and it's like, dog, like, one person said, I remember reading, they were like, they think that it's people who are, who wanted to be creative, but couldn't do it or didn't want to put in the work to be creative. Mm -hmm. And so now they feel this sense of freedom that they could be creative easily using these tools. Mm -hmm. And while that's interesting and, and potentially a boon for them, considering that you can, you can map out in an idea very quickly. Mm hmm at the end of the day, though, you need to create your own thing. Mm -hmm. And it shows when you haven't done it. Because I don't care how good the AI is going to get. Mm -hmm. There's a distinct difference between a human created piece of art and a robotic yeah. piece of art. And, and yeah. Yeah. No, We're you're right. It. We're seeing it. And you know what's funny is like, you know, they're like, okay, well, no, no artists were let go. We did this in tandem, whatever like yeah you can't let any human artists go because right now ai can't actually generate anything that looks right because you right. see all those like you've seen those um anti well those like political shots that they're like oh you know especially okay so those pro police they're like pro police yeah, yeah, pictures yeah. And then, like, they're posting all over Twitter, like, this police officer rescued this Muslim girl from da 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 you know, the police are good. It was, like, all these pro-police things. That, and it's, like, and people, you know, they're liking the picture. Oh, my God, this is so beautiful. Oh, my God. Like, I'm really happy she was rescued. And then finally somebody says, this is AI. Like, yeah. the police officer has six fingers. There's a yes. reason why you can't get rid of humans yet, because computers can't, they can't 
the AI making these pictures is not flawed. It's very flawed. Now it can yeah. make something very like beautiful to the eye. You're like, oh wow, this is cool. This is and it and it happens so easily. Like you you can sit okay, you know, like um the the guy who like does the it's really cool, but the guy who online he does like African versions of Japanese animation characters. <laughs> so it's yeah, like yeah. all the African versions of like Frieza and Vegeta and Trunks. And it, mind you, it's hilarious, especially because the Nigerian guy then goes and does their voices. <laughs> or he does right. like Nigerian voices <laughs> or Jamaican voices. Mind you, great. It's com- It's comedic. It's hilarious. It's awesome. Like, I love it. And that's fine. That's great. Whatever, because it's fun. But like, I don't know. It's different. It's like hobby. And at least the person is admitting it. Like, yo, this is not, this is not real. I didn't draw this. But it's right. like when you can look at something and you're like, oh, that's so cool. And it took five minutes or less to create and it doesn't even take five minutes you know if you have the generator on your phone you click it you literally snap a selfie and then next thing you know you're an alien and it took 15 seconds for the whole thing to happen and and we know that something of that caliber when a human does it takes hours upon hours or days or whatever and so there's a lot of time invested there's there's money here and so I think obviously the idea is how can we get things done faster and then just use the humans to clean up. It's like the, the self checkout aisles that are always messing up. So then they decided, well, we just need to have like a human just stand there. Right. (laughs) And I'm not mad at the self checkout because you know, I don't, I don't like to talk to people, but I get it. I totally get it. And Mm -hmm. what's interesting, even if it wasn't, even if it didn't have six fingers and, you know, multiple eyes and all this other stuff, right? Mm-hmm. It's also the fact that there's no thought put into it. Yeah, the no AI thought. takes mm-hmm. takes the bare the basic of what you want. Yeah, you know, you put in black person, superhero, yeah, uh, morning shot, whatever, and it'll pull these things from from artists from artists. It'll put song, it together, yeah. but then it it won't there won't be any logic to what's happening, mm-hmm. and you, you can know tell. What? You can tell. Great example. I have a great example for you. There's a conversation that I've been having online. Somebody did AI versions of um, Tolkien's characters. And so they did, um, they took some of the bigger names from the Silmarillion. And in the, mm. the Silmarillion is, you know, mostly about the elves. Obviously, it does have some stories that include men and dwarves. For, right. um, and, you know, like, like little things or whatever, you know, Numenor or whatever. But somebody decided that they were going to take some of the big names from the Silmarillion and turn them into AI characters. And they're like, oh, you know, hey, here's my... And I'm like, okay, you're doing this for likes because it you clearly put no effort into this. And I, I, right. like, I'm one of the people who didn't like the video. And, um, and I said, I said, look, like these pictures are beautiful. But one person said they all look alike because they did. They all of these characters, yeah. they're like, they all look alike. Like, come on, dude. And then I, I said, look, okay, I'm just going to put it like, you know, these are pretty, whatever. But... You have a whole bunch of elves here and 90% of all of the elves that you listed have five o'clock shadows and they also have like strong features. I'm sorry. Did you read Tolkien? Did you read? (laughs) Elves don't have beards. There's only two elves that have beards. Two. Like out of the millions of them, there's two. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. And, um, and they don't have these strong rugged features that men have men are going to be the ones who have more broad features and more chiseling and then else look ethereal yeah and what you've created is just some like you know good looking really cool pictures that are so detailed and they're shading everywhere and these like they kind of pull at your heartstrings these these images you're like oh wow that is so man like the coloring and all oh wow but I'm like, okay, no, I'm going to be critical here. That's my Dross. That's like one of my favorite elves. That's one of the, you know, gray. Ca- I love them gray characters. He's terrible and great at the same time. This is a dude who like literally murdered people <laughs> for his father's jewel and like literally killed people because he was like cursed. <laughs> okay. But then he was a great dude. Great. Like awesome. This is a dude who got hung up on a, on a, 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 the cliff for 24 years and like cried and told his cousin, just shoot me, dad, kill me. And this cousin's like, <laughs> okay, I'll kill you. I'm, I'm so sorry. And then it's like trying to shoot him. It's like, Oh no, I'm going to pray first. And then he gets saved. Like, come on this. I love this character. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, does he have five o'clock shadow? 
<laughs> I was like, wait, what? Why is he so rugged? Like these people are nine thousand years old. Like well, they're pretty. Get yeah. out of here. Like, what are you doing? And then, no, for real, everything looks alike. So that is just it's just goes to show that the computer is still a computer at this point in time. It it's not a human. You know, the computer doesn't have nuance. It doesn't have the ability to kind of like it doesn't have yeah, the doesn't, same understanding. At all. It doesn't have the understanding of tone. It doesn't have mm-hmm. understanding of of purpose even. Like yeah. what is like it can create a scene, a police officer helps someone, mm-hmm. but it'll do it in a way that people um, uh, automatically recognize it to be false because there's no tone, there's no thought yeah. put in. Because yeah. it's not AI. It's We're calling it AI, but it's mm-hmm. not. It's pulling yeah. information. It's no It's no more AI than Google search engine yeah. is AI. It's, it's, it's more, pulling information. If I, I want to even call you know, oh, artificial intelligence, I would call it, call it more like automated information. You know, yeah. like you yeah. have gotten as much data as you can. And Another thing that people need to understand about where the data is being pulled from, it's not simply just the data that's being pulled from people's like DeviantArt accounts or just artwork that people yeah. have put online for the public to see because they wanted people to see their artwork so they could start getting paid for the work that they love doing. It's exactly. not just pulling that stuff. It's pulling stuff that from apps that you have given permissions to on your phone. Right. Like, have you yep. ever considered the fact that like you downloaded an app to just, you know, play cards on your phone, not play cards online with other people. You want to play solitaire on your phone while there's no service. Like, but did you realize that that app asked you for like a zillion permissions to read your call logs, to read your text messages, to read all of your, um, all of your keystrokes? Like what, if you're just playing solitaire, what does that app need your keystrokes for? Like what are these apps then give your data away, not all of them, but many of them, give your data away to data mining companies. I mean, people are data analysts. They get paid to literally analyze data that comes in. Yeah. So they can sell you something. They can sell you something. Like how much do you do this? Mm -hmm. I mean, we've all been there where, you know, and this is, this, at this point is is inescapable. We can't outside of, this is our world. getting like you know browsers like opera and stuff like that that Mm -hmm. kind of blocks a lot of these things a lot of what we have is going to collect data no matter what we do Mm -hmm. but with the ai stuff though it's purposing is moving towards something at least with the targeted ads is like Mm -hmm. all right fine i'm i'm someone trying to sell me something we've kind of been we're used to that Mm -hmm. but creating something from my yeah. data and then selling that and to other selling people mm-hmm. is a weird thing that's and a weird using thing it as that your we're doing own creation you're using it exactly. as your, that is the thing we like our normal thing normal things that you and i would get up to on a daily basis just if i'm putting in my text message and saying oh i wake up every day at this time and i go to the gym and then i brush my teeth and i use this type of toothpaste and and I'm talking to my friend about, oh, I dyed my hair with henna and this is how my face looks now compared to, like, I'm just saying, like, let me just you know, paint a picture of the conversations that I may have with somebody. And if an app is pulling that data and it's selling it to a company that is, has, you know, is using these, these data things to create something. And then next thing I know, five years down the line, a character has been created who's doing the exact same thing that I was telling my friend. Or or they, they look just like you. They that, look I think just there like was me. was a case of that on, um, I believe there was a case of that. Mm-hmm. I, I, and I saw on, on Twitter where someone was like, their family uh, was being used as like an ad for a, a product that they never mm-hmm. heard of and never took pictures for and never yeah. was. And it's like, she was like, they're allowed to do that? Like, that's not, and granted they weren't, but no. mm-hmm. because there's so much paperwork and, and whatnot that goes into that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. No one like there's so too many people. We don't have enough money to sue the amount yeah. of companies that we would need to for that does not be a thing. And yeah. it's because this is a, uh, a thing that hasn't been from what I understand, there's no laws created outside of direct mm-hmm. like, likenesses in the, in the form of like if someone made a video game and put your likeness in it or and if you name. have a tattoo, mm-hmm. your name or you had a tattoo the and you were in you were scanned and put in a video game that artist the tattoo artist could actually be upset about that that mm-hmm. happened with um 
uh, I think it was The Rock. It was someone, whoever did, uh, there was a famous person who had a big tattoo. Mm -hmm. They were in a movie or a, sh or a video game. The artist who did the tattoo somehow had rights to that as well. I'm not sure mm -hmm. how that works because I thought once you put it on the person's body, it's theirs. But it's theirs, right? Only within a certain, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they were like, hey, you owe me some money for this because I did the work for that, right? Mm -hmm. So then now we get all this information. This person that's created has this person's tattoo that has mm -hmm. this person, whatever has this person's what, and they put it together. And it's like this algorithm of like features, but it's all stolen mm. and you can't do anything about it. It's just, there's not any, and then on top of that, it's not even used in a way that makes sense. It's like the rocks arms on Loki's body. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's just weird stuff. Oh um, I think the, the secret invasion is the most, contemporary or like mm -hmm. functional version of this and i think it's because artists went in behind it mm -hmm. but yeah. it's not a good move it's not something mm -hmm. that is that bodes well for the mm -hmm. future um that was interesting I think that was, they said it why did they why was that why did it become because they topic? don't understand because they were they were talking about like how interesting this is like mm -hmm. hey want to know something cool because they were doing interviews to promote yeah. the show and yeah. whatnot and like you know you want to know like how cool this is i believe they were on was it screen rant i forget what, oh, that, what well, that was their problem site it was on. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um they were talking about how they had reached out to different ai vendors to kind of see what they can do because the the, the the ai is being talked about like yeah. all over the case um i think it was polygon mm -hmm. they, they spoke with they were like you know we want to create something new unique to us and all this other stuff which is funny when they use the word unique unique and yeah yeah and so they were looking into ai to do this but all of everything that could have that was done in this yeah could have been know, done opening, by a human right could have been done by humans i mean it might have been cheaper i don't know i mean i know i'm pretty that, sure that if you i mean it would have cost more yeah yeah if they did humans yeah um, but i don't know how much more considering that it was done by a studio versus an app they didn't use yeah. an app. It was uh, Method Studios that they worked that did with. It. Yeah. Right. You know, it's, it's so, so I, I don't know. Yeah. It's just interesting. I mean, like, I get it. What they're basically, basically, this has now become a topic of conversation because they didn't realize how, the negative ramifications of them actually being like, by the way, everybody, we're using AI. Instead Correct. of just keeping it to yourself. Like, no, I don't think anybody except maybe artists would have been like, oh, well, I wonder how they, how they did this opening. Um, because I would have looked right past it, but the fact that this article they're talk, you know, they're having that interview, and then they're saying, "Oh yeah, so we used AI for the opening," and it's like, you didn't need to tell us that. Like when they That's did Trigun, they are. yeah, yeah, they're they're mad clueless because I'm saying like it's not like Trigun just said to everybody, "Oh, by the way, hey, we're gonna do a CGI Trigun show," and this is like, but I mean, I'm, I mean, they may yeah, have said it to somebody, but it's like. That's not the draw here. Right, exactly. The story exactly. is the draw. So yep. however you make the whatever medium you use, as long as you know what I mean. But like I didn't realize that it was so necessary for them to to And say. that's the thing. The, with them talking about it, it was more so like, hey, we we think you're gonna love the show and we have a unique opening. And then it kind of came out from there. Mm -hmm. And because they aren't, they, they're like, we don't know how it works. So it's like, you're, you're, because you don't know, you said something. If you knew. Yeah, yeah you wouldn't have said anything. Which is why I believe them. Because <laughs> if you knew, you might have been quiet about it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Hey, hey, yeah, we, we had Method Studios do it, and that would have been it. But yeah. the fact that you spoke about it, it's like, oh, you don't know. And he, they admitted it. They like, we don't know. They just, they did their magic. We don't know and anything. It's, like, it's the same thing with a lot of people who are on Twitter who are promoting the AI. This, they don't know how it works. They yeah, don't know what it's doing that it takes because of stuff. that. Um, I, I was asked by someone about it, being that I'm an artist, mm -hmm. how I felt about it. And I was like, I think it's an interesting tool mm -hmm. that could be used in, for referencing. Like, I want to create a scene and I need to know what uh, this particular type of car looks like. Mm -hmm. It pulls that data and it makes that car. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I can use those tires. Everything mm -hmm. else is mine, but I'm going to use those tires to, for, as a reference. Because mm -hmm. that's what I do when I go to Google. If I go to draw something, I'll pull a picture of a car. Yeah. And I'll, 
have or you have multiple cars, different angles, mm-hmm. so I can get a picture in my head and then I yeah. make my own car. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's so it looks realistic. Does. Exactly. Yeah. And so if you can't physically go look at a car, right? And so I'm like, in that purpose is for that purpose, I think it works well because you mm-hmm. can quickly get something like you know, spaceship, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the leaning tower of Pisa. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like you can get whatever you want really, really quickly, use it as a reference, create your own thing. Mm-hmm. That's what art does. But instead they're like, huh, let me just take the thing. Yeah. It's like, no, that's no, 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 mm-hmm. no. That's how I feel <laughs> like somebody that. like me who doesn't, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I've never been good at drawing like for real, for real. I, I've tried anyway. And I feel like a lot of the AI stuff that I see, and again, I'm not saying that every person who's doing these AI artworks on their Instagrams, is not an actual artist and they just you know, mm-hmm. know how to do computer stuff. I'm, I'm, I, I'm not going to go far to say that because I don't know. I do know for a fact that there are people who are actually artists and then they're, they're working with AI because it's a new tool and then they're cleaning them up and making them nice and then they're putting them on and being like, look what I did. But somebody like me, I know because it's easy, you can get get these apps, you can pay for them, well, it's $20, you can pay for this app right. and then you can just put in your prompts and then create something and then you post it on your page and you're like, this is what I created using AI. And then all of a sudden, everybody starts flocking towards your page because you're putting out all these cool p- pictures. And yeah, the prompts are yours, but the data being used, the data yeah. to make those pictures is being taken from other people's work. And the other thing yep. that um, I had, the, one of the first things that I ever read about AI pictures wasn't this. The first thing I read was they're like, they're like, hey guys, be careful with those apps, those AI picture apps, the ones that you take a picture of your face and they turn you into something. And they're like, be careful of those because as soon as you do that, then that company owns that picture and next thing you know, you're that the, whatever you created could be used. They'll just take that artwork and they can use that to create something. And next, yeah, hey, it's not. It's, yours. it's it's a loop. <laughs> it keeps going. Yeah, you you have no. I mean, mm-hmm. granted, you wouldn't have ownership anyways because it's a bunch of stolen data. But then, yeah, they can then use that and take it from you. It's it's so mm-hmm. it's it's like it's, it's like your face. Levels. Like you took right. your own face and then you basic, added that piece. You added that piece. You gave them your face. Like they own it now. That's that's part of the the small print in the app. And they own it now. Yeah. They own your face. They like because you know how the ones are like, oh, you can pick whatever you want. So it's like alien. And then now that's mm-hmm. your face as an alien. Or there's another one where it's like, oh, make me an anime character. Like, and you just you dress up or whatever, and then they just fluff your outfit about and then kind of like put you in a different pose but still using your likeness. So it's like, hey, if another artist is looking on that database, because, you know, they pay that company too. And they're like, oh, that's a really cool care. I'm just going to, I'm going to take this. I'm going to use this. It's like, yeah, you paid and them people... to turn you into a character. You're not even getting paid by whoever is going to end up using your image in their show. Exactly. <laughs> and for people who don't, who don't realize like how, terrible that is because you might think whatever it's my face i don't care like they they have my face on youtube and uh, Mm -hmm. you know uh facebook and all this other place i remember there was a case of an actress who didn't want to do a nude scene in a film Mm -hmm. and what they did was they they superimposed her face on a model's body but no one knew that so when you look when you see the film you think she's nude and she was upset about that and that you know they went to you know whatever they did you know, with the courts and everything, but just think about that now. You're not, and at the very least, she got paid for the role. Mm. You're not getting paid, and that could potentially be you. Yeah, it could potentially be you mm-hmm. put in a compromising. We already, you know, on, online they're talking about how people can mimic your voice, then they mimic yeah. your face, and now someone could. I mean, we're getting to the point where someone could FaceTime someone you care about, looking yeah. like you mm-hmm. with your voice. Yeah, you know what I mean, like. And it's saying, wild. I'm being it's kidnapped. Wild. Give me send money now. Look, if right, I ever call would, in, yeah. don't ever send money. <laughs> don't. I'm not worth it. I'm not. I'm just like, like <laughs> literally, they say they were like, you know what? Godspeed, Teresa. You had you you've been on this earth for a long time. You haven't done nothing. So like, I feel like no terrible. Nope, somebody FaceTimes you and says they're me asking for ransom. It's not me. I would never. I'm going to yeah. be the person who gets kidnapped, and I'll be like, "Am I talking too much? Do, like, do you want? Me, I, I cooked. You guys want me to bake cookies? Like, are you guys good? Like, that's me. She, yeah, I, text me. Like, look, you have to prove yourself. Mm-mm, nope. 
We're not doing that. I'll be like, call your phone right exactly now. Right. Hold up. Because apparently, a hey, hey, Tess, apparently you've been kidnapped. Uh, be did, like, were you aware? I'm like, what? I'm literally laying in the same spot. I've been here for three days playing Marvel Snap and Black Mirror is on in the background. What are y'all even talking about? Who is this person? Yeah. See? <laughs> Oh man. But yeah, that is our show for today. Mm-hmm. Shout out to everybody that hung out with us. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening on YouTube, feel free to hit that uh, subscribe button at notification bell so you're up on all the new content that's coming. If you're listening yeah. on Spotify, iTunes, mm-hmm. all those great places, add us there. Uh, add us to your RSS feed, subscribe. Again, so you're up on all the new content. Uh, have a lot to talk about because there's there's no shortage of film, video games, and just everything else to talk about. I'm going yeah. to be talking about anime pretty soon because uh, a couple of anime are coming up on their season finales. Some new shows have been popping up and uh, new seasons of older shows have been popping up as well. And so I want to talk about that a little bit in the future future episodes because uh, some of these animated shows are very interesting in what they're doing um, and how they are handling certain topics mm-hmm. That are mature. For instance, Crunchyroll does not have like you know pornographic material or anything on on their show, but they do have shows that are were made to be such, and so mm. they're censored. Oh. And it's like a weird thing, like watching an anime, not even that, but like an anime that has nudity and mm-hmm. that the manga has nudity, but then they censor it, and it's like this just looks weird. This scene, yeah, what, why what are you even doing? put it like, on? Right, and that's that's something we're going to talk about uh, in the coming coming episodes. But the anime, apparently, the anime is so popular that it's like, well, we're just going to do what we're going to do. And it's not just Crunchyroll though; it's also um, in, on TV. It's censored as well. I mean, um, and we've we've seen that before. Censored. Yeah, that that was tsunami. It was like you had to stay up yeah. until eleven thirty to watch. So what is the name? Duo Curse. Adult, <laughs> yes, yes. Adult Swim. Adult Swim. Before the Adult <laughs> Swim, it was just tsunami at eleven. Remember, yes. like it was yeah. literally, and it was like, wait a minute, did Ryoko just say shit on TV? Yeah, you remember yep. that when that happened? Yes, Ryoko yeah. flipped the bird and then said shit, and it was like, wait, 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 because they realized that they played the uncut version from the eleven o'clock show during the daytime, yes. and all the parents called the cable companies, and they were so pissed off. Fam, if we had social media back then, it would have blew up. <laughs> It would have blew all the way up. Like, oh, that good was grief. so funny anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, we got some more stuff to talk about um, in the coming show. So, yes, subscribe, notification bell, all that good stuff. Because I want you to come back. Yeah. Come back. Um, mm-hmm. Also, because uh, some of you have, have been mentioning and leaving comments here and there about the show, things that you liked. Actually, only things that you like, which is great. Hey, that's um, nice. But yeah, you haven't been suggesting anything. One person suggested that we do a breakdown of all the Moon Girl episodes or oh. just a review of the whole show because we did a review of the first three episodes. Yeah, we did. Um, they wanted us to kind of do a spoiler-based review of the whole show. And oh. I was like, if we ever get time to check it out, then yeah. you know, we can look into that. But that's, that was, they liked that episode so much that they wanted us to come back. So well, give us yeah. some more suggestions. More suggestions, mm-hmm. and we'll look into them. You know, put them on the board. Well, you know definitely, I mean? yeah. Yeah. And well, but, if uh, we have yep. time to watch stuff, I mean, it gets really hard to <laughs> keep watch. But but no, Moon Girl, I will do my best to get back on because I really, I said I was going to, and then I didn't because I didn't do anything. So we'll, <laughs> we'll do. We can tell us what you want us to review. We'll do it. We yes. will. We'll get, we will definitely get there. I will. We'll do it. <laughs> That's it, y'all. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Um, be kind, everybody. Wear your masks if you're going to be like in crowded places, even though like I didn't wear my mask today in my Uber. So anyway, um, it's OK. I'm apparently I'm not sick, <laughs> but uh, wash your hands, wash your faces, wash your butts and your legs. And, you know, just yes, be nice. God. <laughs> skip. Don't don't skip leg day. Don't please don't. <laughs> please don't. It was like I was a whole new meeting. Um, yeah, be kind, everybody. Pray for Jack Hanna. And, um, yeah, that's it. That's it, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.